Well, hey, Brandy, thanks for uh, having coffee with me today. And, and really what I hope is, it's not the start of a conversation, it's kind of the continuation of a conversation that um, you and I have talked a little bit, but, but even maybe bigger picture than that, uh, for us as a church, we've started the conversation a few years ago, and, uh, and that's on the topic of racial reconciliation. And why I just wanted us to, to have a conversation today. Um, I think it's so important um, uh, for me, I think it's so important for our church to understand uh, how to walk this out in 2018 and beyond and uh, and what it really looks like. And so I'm just going to ask you maybe a couple questions and you can throw them back at me and, uh, and we'll see how we'll see how it rolls. Right. So yeah. it's just two people who I know love, love Jesus, love the church and uh, want to see this happen. So maybe first just, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about um, uh, maybe growing up and the concept today. So growing up in the church and when you think about racial reconciliation, kind of what, what you've seen and what you think about. Well, you know, it, I've spent at least about 20, 25 years growing up in the church and things have morphed, I would say, over the last 20 years. There was a focus uh, maybe 15 years ago or so just to walk out some of the tenets of not only Jesus, but some of the leaders that we've seen in contemporary America, like Martin Luther King Jr., and, and really understanding as a church, what does that look like for us in this day and time? So uh, some of that for me was understanding that my world was not just one that was black and white. Mm. There were other colors that mm. were involved in that. Yeah. There were other denominations involved in that. And understanding that part of that process involves me sometimes being a little uncomfortable mm. and stepping out of my comfort zone to embrace that. Yeah, what is what has that been like for you? So so being an African American woman um, and saying I I want to be intentional to uh, to not simply be the one who's only with other African Americans, to be the one who is building relationships with people who have a different color skin than I do, that might have a different background than I do. How has how, what, just maybe share with us what that's been like for you from your perspective. Well, it started actually when I was in high school, uh, attending a predominantly African-American high school as well as church. I had a couple of good friends who were also African-American that had the same mindset. So we would find ourselves going to ethnic festivals. We would find ourselves going to churches that spoke a different language, that sang mm -hmm. different music, and being really uncomfortable, but willing to say, okay, Lord, clearly you have allowed these different cultures to exist and develop in our world, yeah. and there's got to be something unique that each one brings to the table that we should be interacting with and yeah. experiencing. So it took a little while, but... Um, I think because I had folks that were of a like Ooh. mind and perspective, it helped me step out a little yeah. bit. And I continued that in college as well. I found a Bible study that was predominantly Asian. Come <laughs> on now. On, not even on <laughs> purpose. It just happened to be the one that met when I had availability. And I still have friends from that experience. I met them in 1999. We're still friends to this day. Oh my to goodness. To this day, yeah. That's incredible. It was very incredible. <laughs> but they were gracious, they were patient with me because yeah. it was a learning experience. It was an environment I had never been in. Yeah. But one thing that connected us was that we all had a love for Jesus. What, what would you say, so you being someone who, like I said, kind of maybe came out of the gates very bold, I, I don't really know how to best say that. Is, the, is, there, is there one or two things that you would say worked for you or that you learned that you could um, encourage us with to really, you know, um, to make sure we, uh, I'll say cross the street, if we use a, yeah. a joking poli political term, <laughs> reach across the aisle, yeah. you know, but just like to someone that doesn't look like us, like yeah. to, to someone that we know has a different background. You know, two scriptures come to mind. I can't think of the exact pas passages right now. I know one that just talks about loving your neighbor as yourself, mm -hmm. and the other one that talks about thinking things that are lovely, that are good, that are true. So the love your neighbor as yourself, that should be self-explanatory. Yeah. So from a healthy standpoint, yeah. I should reach across the aisle yeah. to anyone. It doesn't right. matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what their socioeconomic background is, anyone. Right. On the other side of things, as far as thinking on things that are pure, that are lovely, that are true, when we see someone that does look different than yeah. us, we often do a mental scan. Yeah. It's can I connect with this person? Mm. Mm. They look a little different than me. I bet that they fulfill this, these particular points of a stereotype. Yeah. 
And those things are not always healthy. They're yeah. not always lovely. They're not always true. They're yeah. not always edifying. And I think that if we approach reaching across the aisle from the perspective of wanting to connect with people and love them the way that we love ourselves, yeah. and also wanting to think the best of people, Come not on. being naive, Come on, because yeah. the Lord has given us wisdom. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But, <laughs> but that's to it. think the best of people, I think, make, will yeah. make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, have you, have you, um, I've never asked you this question, yeah. so have, have you found yourself um, having had some, some moments in the past where you really felt like because of the color of your skin, you were? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, is there, is there a, an area or two you could share? Um, there, uh, and the funny thing is I've been on both sides of the coin. Okay. Where uh, when I first applied for university, my mother and I were so excited, got accepted into the school of my choice, and we were approaching a residence that was a bed and breakfast okay. in Williamsburg in hopes of finding a place that my mother could stay at when she would come down to visit me yeah. for, for college. Yeah. And because that particular area at that time was only used, was used to African Americans being in a in service oriented mm -hmm. roles, when we approached the door, Mm. We were told that all the positions have been filled. Mm. Excuse me? Wait. wait. Mm. There. No. Actually, a student at the school across the street, uh, mm, I was 18, 17 or 18 Gosh. when that happened. Um, in addition to that, sometimes when I go into beauty supply stores, mm. there's a stereotype that I know that it, it's there because there have been negative experiences that the owners have, have had. But I'm often followed around in the store because people who look similar to me mm. have done things in the, yeah. in the past. So my behavior has even changed as a result because I know that th those folks who have experienced some of those things may be ignorant just simply, yeah. they have a small circle. They yeah. have not experienced yeah. uh, connect, real connection with, yeah. with people who look like me. So whenever I go into those beauty supply stores, I make sure that I take just my wallet. I don't take a huge person. Mm. I speak to them when I come in. I make conversation with them yeah. and let them know that um, here's one positive interaction that can hopefully counteract yeah. the stereotype yeah. that they have. So. Th those are just a couple wow. of situations that, wow. I've, that I've had and that spans almost over the last 20 years. Yeah. Uh, on the flip side of that, I've done that. Yeah. Where I've, mm. I've been in a situation where someone was walking behind me and because they fit a certain stereotype, mm. I clutched my purse. Mm. Or if I was walking, uh, riding through a certain neighborhood and I saw some kids that looked a little questionable yeah. of a different race, I locked my door. Mm. So it's on both sides. Yeah. It's not just a, it's, it's not one particular ethnic group um, committing all yeah. of, you know, these, these types of uh, faux pas. <laughs> As you put it so gently. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I think that, um, I think that's why this conversation is so important is because there's no way that uh, I can ever understand what it, yeah. has been like to, to live as, as you live. Yeah. Just just as right, in all honesty, there's no way that you can understand exactly what it's been like to live as I live. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if we're honest, we would hope that could be the beauty, whereas we as Christians yes. could have and make sure we keep this conversation in the forefront. Yeah. It is without a doubt, like in my heart and in the heart of our church, that we would, um, I say lead the way. I don't mean that I want us to be the only church. I want lots of churches. I want yes. the body of Christ to really be so intentional because because I think that, I think that true racial reconciliation, I think that truly seeing that the strength and the beauty of diversity has to happen in relationship yes. and in close relationship. I don't think we can say just let's all get together, right, and have just tons of people and pretend that we're all connected <laughs> yeah. because then we're not actually connected. And, uh, and you said something uh, when we were talking a couple days ago just about when I'm like, you know, racial reconciliation and kind of in our church and um, you talked about proactive and reactive. We just share again uh, what you yeah. kind of what you said because it's so good. I think it's, it's just interesting because of media, social yeah. media especially, and its dominance in society at this, at this point in our history. The last few years, whenever something has happened, because the church typically want, we, we want to not be seen 
as um, people who allowed this to happen. Right. This generation is saying, yeah, it may have happened previous gen generations, right. but it's not going to happen on my watch. We tend to speak up when everything is still hot in the media. Yeah. But then afterwards, there's not a lot of follow up. Yeah. And I know the challenge for that is you've, we, we have well-meaning people who know that the perspectives are wrong and the injustices are wrong, but we haven't spent a lot of time as a, the church, as the body, figuring out how to navigate these murky waters. Yeah. So I think that um, part of it has to do with prayer, Yeah. for sure. Yeah. Prayer is definitely crucial <laughs> yeah. yeah because we know it's already uncomfortable right it's already a, a, an uncomfortable um, arena that right. we're involved in when you're dealing with people in general but even more so when you're dealing with ethnicity yeah so we definitely need prayer but also an understanding of sociology just basic just reading maybe books by it people who look different mm. than you, thought mm. leaders who look different yeah. from you, or yeah. thought leaders from a different background. Yeah, such that, good advice. That's a safe place yeah. to learn. It's, we, we, we're not all able to go, okay, I need some black friends. Okay, I need some white friends. And ding, it doesn't happen that way. Right. <laughs> you right. know, it doesn't. So I think it helps when, when, we come, when we approach the issue with prayer and also with the desire to, as scripture says, study to show ourselves approved. Yeah. It's yeah. not just with scripture. Mm. But understanding the world that we live in so mm. that we're able to connect with people at a more um, organic, more uh, authentic yeah, yeah. level, yeah. I think that that will open the door to a level of reconciliation that we have not experienced that's before. That's good. Yeah. Do the homework. You know, that's what I yes. just heard is do the homework. Yeah. Because when we take the time to learn a little bit about what it might have been like uh, to grow up in a different culture, to grow up yeah. with a different color skin than we have, um, it allows us to start that conversation. And uh, you know, we're gonna do everything we can um, as a church to keep being proactive on this topic and to keep building relationships and making it, just keeping it in the conversation, right? Yeah. And so I'm so thankful for you and thankful for today and just the chance to you know, put it in front of our church once again and say, hey, we're committed to the conversation and we're committed to actually seeing how with the Holy Spirit in the middle of all of this, yes, yes. like uh, the church can be the leader uh, in our nation and beyond um, that actually brings unity uh, regardless of past, regardless yeah. of exactly yeah. what we look like. I'm excited to see it. Thank you. Thank you.